Hi, uh, this is Cantano. I'm the CEO of uh, A2ZApps.com. I founded this organization seven years back with my wife, Rajneet. Uh, the objective of the founding this organization was to change the way software industry works and the software is built for end users and the way software is consumed. There are different people, you know, uh, they come at different stages, you know. So when I started my career, you know, I was following my uncle who used to be pilot then, you know, I wanted to be a pilot. And then, you know, when I moved to a to US for my, uh, the first uh, job, then, you know, I was working on a Java technology, right? So it's very obvious that, you know, I was a big fan of Scott McNally. And then when I joined salesforce.com, I got very much influenced by Mark Benioff and the way he runs the organization, the way he leads from the front. So you can say, you know, it's not a single person that I follow, but there are different people, you know, who came at different stage of my life. There is no exact answer, you know, when, when that entrepreneurship spirit came, you know, within myself. But what I can say, you know, when I started working and, you know, I moved to US in a year's time, started working with uh, many startups and, you know, some of the big organization that I was consulting for. And then I was lucky to be recruited by Salesforce.com, which was a startup uh, then in back in 2002 and I was you know thinking about you know that this is the model might be is very lucrative for the people for the SME small and mid-sized organizations in India and the developing countries when it stuck you know that might be I should try and you know I should start a venture in that direction and then when you know I was waiting for the right opportunity because you require a lot of money to start with uh, that time the India was not ready or you can say for venture capital industry it was not a VC ready country so thought you know let's gain some experience you know work with the company then luckily I made a lot of money we did go through IPO and I decided might be it's the right time uh, you know to start a venture invest all the money that I made instead of investing in apartments you know or buying expensive cars so that's when I decided that more probably it's the right time to go back to India, start the venture. So uh, I was having the IT background, right? So I started as a developer, then moved to architect role, managing projects, some of the pre-sale activities. So I gained a lot of knowledge in that particular industry. So IT was an enabler, but uh, I've been working with a lot of different industries and we are giving them different kind of IT solutions to help them. So it was obvious that, you know, I wanted to make it very big and that's possible today if you do some kind of technology innovation and you bring that to the market might be you can help a lot of people and a lot of organizations. So when I returned to India, you know, uh, the reason I quit Salesforce.com, it was a big decision though. Uh, my idea was to make it a, you know, a global product out of India and help millions of SMEs in India and other developing countries. So when I came back, I, I thought that might be I'm a late bit, you know, in terms of entering the space, right? But when I came, I found that, you know, might be cloud is kind of a buzzword to a lot of people, they don't understand. So though we are one of the early adopters and that was the advantage we had, you know, we spent a lot of time in, uh, you know, spending, and investing in research and development. Uh, but uh, what we found that a lot of people don't understand what cloud stands for, right? So at the same time, we saw that a lot of companies like Amazon, you know, and companies like data center companies, they, they started marketing, you know, uh, what they think the cloud is for, right? And that was creating a lot of misconceptions in the industry. You know, people are not being able to understand what is cloud, People know what is internet. So I would say the misunderstanding of the concept, the awareness was not there. So that was the low of the industry. But then again, you can say that is the high of the industry from our perspective in the sense that the, there's a huge opportunity ahead of us. And especially when you are sitting in India and there is no other technology company who is working on the similar stuff, you know, out of Asia Pacific. There might be one or two companies out of US but you know no company out of Asia. I was working you know when I was in uh, US in San Francisco I was working for salesforce.com 
So I joined as a you know, startup employee and then uh, we did uh, see the success through IPO. Uh, suddenly I saw my bank balance is going high, but that didn't prompt me to buy house or cars. But initially, you know, I was thinking about whether to continue with the same company or to quit. So I was not certain about the timing, but I think uh, my wife Rajnit helped me to take that big decision. Uh, I don't appreciate that much, but I must appreciate here. Um, then, you know, we moved back, right? So it was very difficult, you know, selling off all your items, you know, in the US. I had a lot of expensive stuff and then, you know, uh, living a high paying job, coming back to India, which was not a very entrepreneur friendly that time in terms of the technology entrepreneurship, uh, coming back and putting your own money in the business, right? So it was a lot of a big decision. So um, we came back, uh, myself and Rajneet, we hired a bunch of guys, you know, uh, some from Kerala, some from Jaipur, so different cities, and we put together a team. And, and that's how it got started, you know, and then it took almost uh, one and a half years, or you can say two years, to come up with the initial product of, of the whole stack that we have today. See, the growth of the company very much depends on, you know, how we are going to make our customers happy, right? That's the mantra for all businesses, right? So what we believe in this space, especially in cloud computing and the IT industry, that you know the how you bring the innovation to the forefront right so the technology innovation that that's what the a2gfs has been working on we are trying to make the technology looks like a non-technology to everybody right the business users the consumers and all so one is the innovation technology innovation that will drive the growth of the company moving forward and second thing is that we, we need to work very closely with uh, you know, small and mid-sized organizations. Though we work with the large organizations, but our primary focus is SME. So we have to make sure that we work closely with fast 100,000 SME customers you know, to make them happy. So that you know, they become our brand ambassador rather than salespeople are going and selling our product. If you talk about the target customers, you know, the primarily SMEs are our target customers but uh, across uh, different industries and different functions. So whether these are the small organizations or the large organizations, you know, we, we also work with uh, some of the large organizations, you know, help them, you know, to generate new ideas and build, you know, and deliver new solution to their consumers, but our primary focus is SME. So uh, we are, here, A2G, A2G apps was born to empower the SMEs, make them feel like they are they are the big companies in the market and they can compete with the big players. Innovation is the mood mantra of uh, A2G apps, right? So A2G apps was born uh, with the idea of innovating the technology to help the organizations, you know. So uh, when we talk about innovation, it is uh, internal and external both. So that means uh, we internally the follow different processes and you know we try to bring innovation and use our own cloud platform for our internal purpose. On the other side of the organization is that our technology innovation is empowering us to deliver solutions in more innovative way to our end customers and consumers, right? So when we talk about innovation, we talk about how to deliver business solutions, software solutions, applications over the cloud to the business customers and consumers, you know, at an affordable cost. And the way they want or the way they want to do moving forward. So it's very important for us when you are targeting SMEs that how do you help SMEs today? They demand for everything and they are they don't have big pocket to go for big software. So innovation is the only way to help them, you know, uh, to move forward with what they want to achieve and how they want to compete with their uh, big competitors. So if we don't give the innovative technology 
they won't be able to use it in the most innovative way for their business scenario. So it's very important for us to deliver and do a lot of innovation so that we can deliver the platform to our end customers starting from small to mid and large organizations at an affordable cost and a new unique way, right? And from the customer's point of view that they come up with the new ideas and sometimes they can't take those ideas to the real world because they think that technology is not their forte. So they don't have such platform. So how they are going to do that? So now we are making that dream to happen, right? So now they can take A to Z apps platform, they can convert their great ideas into real applications and put in the, put in the right use, right? So when we started, you know, uh, you know, seven years back and then we uh, spent almost two years to come up with the initial product and the platform, um, that time the environment was different. Uh, recruiting people was much easier. Training people was much easier. Retaining people was much easier. So on the the human capital front, I would say there's a huge change. There's a high inflation and people are under peer pressure. Though the country is getting ready for startups, you know, uh, and it is getting more entrepreneur friendly. A lot of venture capital is coming to India, but at the same time, we see that there's a lack of resources of the people who are willing to work for startups for a few years. So you don't come here just to work for six months and go and you know, join a big company. So on the human capital front, I would say that that was the, there's a big change. And from the customers of the market perspective, I would say that the India market is moving a bit slowly than what uh, we all expected a few years back. And, uh, but we are very committed team and we are very focused. Uh, our objective is to help millions of, you know, business users and consumers, right? So that is our uh, primary focus. So I think uh, we are here to make that difference. But I would say that, you know, five years back, uh, the challenges that we faced are a bit different than what we are facing today. Overall, uh, we are far away from uh, you know where we want to reach. So I don't think that we should say we have uh, reached certain level of success. But what we feel that you know that moment will come, and when we all feel proud that yes, we have done a bit for the society. When you see that you know the our customers who have been using our cloud OS, you know they are advocating for us, right? They are talking about us, they are be becoming our brand ambassador. So that is very important because, you know, if my sales, em sales employees are selling, that's, that's true for any companies, right? So what we want that our customers are selling our product more than our salespeople, right? So that moment, I think we are waiting for that moment when, you know, our customers will be talking on behalf of us and take to a different level. From the day we started A to the apps, uh, we are very much clear about, you know, uh, giving something back to the society. Everybody talks about it, but, you know, everybody thinks that, you know, once you have enough money, probably you should contribute to the society. But we decided that from day one, we'd love to contribute 1% of our product subscriptions, our cloud OS subscription uh, to non-profit institutes. 1% of the employee salary will go to the uh, non-profit activities and uh, also the one percent of the company's revenue right uh, I'd be very honest that we have not been successful on that front but we have done uh, some of these activities you know uh, uh, for you know to help the community but I think we are very much committed and we have already you know uh, putting you know a person to focus on the uh, this this side of business. So uh, last seven years, uh, what we have been observing in in the market, uh, especially in India, uh, whether on customer front, 
or the other fronts, what we feel that uh, though we have been talking a lot about entrepreneurship, uh, startup funds, ecosystem, people are more you know willing to join startups, but I think that the it's not that way. So I might be wrong, but uh, when I talk to the other entrepreneurs and all, I see there are difficulties. Um, I was a bit fortunate that you know I met. Uh, not a lot, but some money, uh, you know, out of my, you know, from my previous company when we did go through IPO and put all those savings into this venture. So I was able to, you know, build something which is, which can be sustainable, right? So, but for entrepreneurs who are looking for funds, you know, to start business, I see that India is still difficult, but I think it is possible that if you have a right determination and all. And other issues that we face, you know, over you know last couple of years, that there is not a strong support system. We hear a lot about incubation centers and all, but um, I think uh, we as a country need to come forward uh, with open heart, you know, to encourage startups. Uh, I'll give an example. We have been running this organization and I've been meeting, you know, uh, many investors, even Dipanjan also had met, you know, but we don't see that, you know, some people, not only investors, you know, some of the uh, other stakeholders as well that come and see how the startups work, you know, means they know how startup works, but you come and see how a 2 gfc is innovating on a day-to-day -day basis and helping organizations and having a big ambition. So I see that in, in India, the problem is that you cannot have a big dream, you know. So I think that it's up to the individuals that you need to think big and make impossible possible. So I don't think that you can start a venture just to rely on some of your contacts that you might have into the venture community or some of the contacts you might have into the big customer network. But what is important that you believe in yourself and start working on it, then the result will come. So I, I would say that it was not a very startup friendly, I would say. Um, and then other recommendations that I have that I see, um, the government rules, right? Those are not at all startup friendly. The process that we follow, the same process followed by the big companies, right? Like Tata, Bidla. So I'll give a small example. You know, somebody is investing, you know, uh, sorry, I, I think I should mention that Surat Sina. So he invested some of the seed money initially. So when he invested from his US account, we had to go through a lot of hassles with RBI, filling out a lot of application forms, uh, keep on paying money to some of the authorized people that you know who will be signing those papers and I was so upset you know instead of focusing and keeping money to give salaries to employees and build the next generation product to make this country beautiful and put on a global product map but I was spending good amount of time within that period just dealing with this you know uh, the government institutes you know so i think it was not that friendly but i wish that uh, you know new government has come to the center i hope that there are some new initiatives being taken so that startups can be groomed properly with the support from big brothers like tata Bidla.